Let's do a couple of examples using these new concepts of simple harmonic motion. Let's start with the object whose period of SHM is 0.6 seconds, amplitude A, and initially at x is equal to 0. Velocity in the positive direction, so it's going to the right. How long does it take to get to 1 fourth of its amplitude? So if the object is initially at x is equal to 0, then x is equal to a sine omega t, which is a cosine of omega t plus 90. The object is initially at x is equal to 0, and so this is 0 when t is equal to 0, right? Therefore, 0 equals 0. That's why the conditions require this. But our fundamental formulation of position was a cosine omega t. And so what we're going to do is consider that if this is 0, and a cosine of 0 is a, but if we add 90 degrees, it's really cosine of 90 degrees, which is 0. So that's kind of like the phase angle that we've just discussed. Now, 1 fourth of the amplitude is a sine omega t. So the a's go away. We have sine omega t is a quarter. Inverse sine of a quarter is omega t. Let's divide by omega. So t is 1 over omega, inverse sine of 0.25. And remember what omega is. Omega, we've already derived it, square root of k over m, right? But it also relates to period in 2 pi. Omega is 2 pi f. And f is 1 over the period. Therefore, omega is 2 pi over t. So this becomes t over 2 pi inverse sine of 0.25, which is 0 0.0241 seconds. Sorry, I was just clicking at my wife there because she was over in the kitchen making me a wonderful batch of something. It's smelling good and just about ready to have some. And also the coffee's brewing because i got to be up late tonight. But I waste our time, don't I? So now, next problem. Three kilogram block attached to an ideal spring. K is 200 newtons per meter. And we're going to give the block an initial velocity of 12 meters per second. X0 is equal to 0 again. So for this problem, we're going to find the amplitude phase angle and this equation X versus T. So our basic expression for X, A cosine omega T plus phi, the phase angle. So we'll take the derivative and velocity is negative omega a sine omega t plus v. Well, we know from this that since, uh, since x0 is equal to 0, then uh, we have that a is equal to v0 over omega. Since v0 is equal to omega a, And, therefore, we have that's equal to v0 over square root of k over m, since omega is square root of k over m. And again, if you forget this connection, the connection we had up here where omega is equal to 2 pi over t, if you recognize that period is 2 pi square root of m over k, the basic formulation for period of a spring mass system, then you can relate that to omega and solve it and find out that it's equal to square root of k over m. So hopefully that's not all too confusing. But these relationships between omega, k and m, period, 2 pi, are not altogether intuitive all at once. You gotta kinda parse it out a little bit, take it step by step. Start with omega is equal to 2 pi f, which is 2 pi over t. All right, so this ends up being 1.47 meters. Well, I have this sense that I didn't explain how I got that amplitude on the previous slide. Amplitude is V0 over omega, because if you look at the expression for the velocity, which is omega a sine omega t plus V, the largest the displacement can be is the amplitude. So sine of omega t plus V is 1. And therefore, the amplitude is V0 over omega, V0 
is the largest V can be. And then we divided by omega to get the answer that we did. So hopefully that makes more sense now. And now let's find the phase angle phi. At x0, we have omega t is 0. And thus we have that x0 is a cosine of phi. So phi is inverse cosine of x0 over a. And that's inverse cosine of 0 because x0 is 0. So that's plus or minus pi over 2. Now, how do we know whether it's plus pi over 2 or minus pi over 2? We can obtain that by considering the velocity, which is minus omega a sine of phi, v0 is. Remember, v0 is the velocity at t is equal to 0. We had sine of omega t plus phi, and so omega t is gone. So minus omega a sine of phi is v0, which is 12. So let's solve for sine of phi, which is 12 over minus omega a. Now 12 over minus omega a is less than zero. And for the sine of the angle to be less than zero, and the two choices are plus or minus pi over two, phi is minus pi over two. And finally, we can get the full expression for x as a function of time, rewriting x, a cosine of omega t plus phi, but we've discovered some particulars. a is 1.47 and phi is minus pi over 2. This is also equivalent to 1.47 sine of omega t. The pi over 2 is like 90 degrees. So when we shift cosine by 90 degrees, we have sine or negative sine, depending on which way you're going. And now omega, square to k over m. So we have the numbers here to plug in. k is 200, m is 3. And finally, x equals 1.47 sine of 8.16t. And I hope you enjoyed that pretty powerful technique to find the position in this problem as a function of time. Let's do this problem where we have an object, an SHM on a frictionless surface with an amplitude of 10 centimeters, 6 centimeters from the equilibrium position. It's moving at 36 centimeters per second. What is the period? Now, at first pass, that seems like a very difficult problem to solve. How do we go about that? Well, we've already done the hard work. Under energy analysis, we discovered that the speed as a, as a function of displacement is 2 pi over the period, square root of a squared minus x squared. So the velocity of simple harmonic motion is related to not only the period, but the amplitude and the particular position at any time. And so we have everything we need there. And so we're going to solve for t. So just do the algebra, 2 pi over v squared of a squared minus x squared. And let's plug some numbers in. We got v, 0.36 at that position. a is 0.1 squared, subtract 0.06 squared. Take the square root, and I'll pops 1.4 seconds. All right, now with the same problem, what's the displacement? Where is that object when the speed is 12 centimeters per second? Well, once again, we use that same expression. We're looking for the displacement, so let's do some algebra. Vt, Vt over 2 pi squared equals a squared minus x squared. Solve for x. And I think I did the algebra right there. Now let's plug in some numbers. There's all the numbers plugged in, and out pops 0.096 meters. Well, so that one little expression, velocity as a function of period and amplitude and position, turned out to be pretty powerful indeed. Well, hang on. We're not done with this problem yet. We're going to now figure out the minimum coefficient of fi friction required if you put a little tiny object on the block for it to stay on the block. Now, where is the block for this analysis? We want to find the minimum mu, the minimum mu, the stickiness of the surface that is required for the object not to slip off. You have to put it at the place where it's going to be most subject to forces that would cause it to slip. And that's where the acceleration would be greatest. Where is the acceleration greatest? 
you guessed it, at the ends. So we're going to have the displacement be all the way over. Ew, yucky. And there it is. The yucky little creature on there. And now, the coefficient of friction is friction over normal. Friction force is the force that enables this little critter to accelerate. So it's equal to the sum of the forces, ma, over normal, which is mg. Therefore, that's a over g. Now, we know acceleration is sum of f over m, so you could say, ah, the spring force divided by, I guess, the whole mass, right? Yeah, that would work, but we don't know what the k is. We don't have the spring force constant. Yes, we could get it, but we really don't need it because we know a over at the amplitude like that is omega squared x, or x is equal to a in this case. So we have omega squared x over g. Now, omega, remember, is 2 pi over t. So you square 2 pi over t and you have 4 pi squared over t squared. There it is, 4 pi squared over t squared times x divided by g. Plug numbers in, 0 0.206. Now let's do a similar problem, but kind of generalize it. Let's go ahead and let there be a small m on big M and come up with an equation for the amplitude such that that little block doesn't slip. In this case, we have the spring constant as well. Now little m is going to change the mass of the system. Well, the SHM force, which is really the net force, trying to restore it back to its equilibrium position. That's what we mean by FSHM. It's the restoring force. In this case, it's the spring force. It's also the net force. Is equal to Ka, spring constant, times the amplitude. And that's Ma, but it's the combined mass times the amplitude. So we're ready to write the answer. A is all this divided by k. So the only thing we have to do is solve for the acceleration, which is friction over mass, sum of f over m, which is mu mg over m, which is mu g. And finally, we get our wonderful answer, m plus m mu g over k. Well, I hope that these few examples increased your problem-solving confidence using some of the physical quantities in a spring mass system in simple harmonic motion.